None of these wires that we see hanging down are live. I can lick them, oh but I won't, because Morgan would get mad. We are at the Ferris Project. This is the one where we had the fun demo day. Let's see how things are progressing. I know we're just about ready to start sheetrock from the reports I get. So it looks a lot wow. different than when you were here the last time. <laughs> it's huge. This is where we were busting down the door and where Keith got bounced back onto the floor and had to get <laughs> up and had to get up. Real quick. So we opened it all up here. Now you're gonna see a, a, a nice large opening here. Wow. Remember how the cabinets were here? Mm -hmm. In demo day, you saw them pounding at these cabinets, pounding at this countertop. Mm -hmm. And now it's all open. The beam is, is now replaced it, tied into another beam with a really nice joist hanger. This is what we're looking for, flush. So the sheetrock finishes out really nice. This will never sag. This will never ever pull apart in any way. It's reinforced with OSB plywood shims and so is this one. But it's all within the span loads of the charts and codes. So we can see we've scraped down ceilings, we've opened up walls, we've got our plumbing electrical being run right now. We've run our gas lines to the new location. We had to modify our gas at the, at the other location over here. I think we can see a patch right here where the mortar is still a little wet, still drying out. This is an area where we moved to a new, a new gas location right in here. This has, been, this has been done, repaired, and so that's all drying out perfectly. If I hadn't pointed out, I don't think you'd see it. But that's a, that's a new gas outlet. That's where we'll be controlling it at. So this is a huge difference when you walk in here and you see the uh, opening that was previously just a closed in wall. You had to go through the kitchen this way and then come around and go through here. You could not get directly to the kitchen. Now you can get to the kitchen from all sides. It feels so much more opened up. We're retexturing all the area around the skylight, of course. Gonna be some beautiful new cabinets and countertops coming in, backsplashes. This is a second phase of a project because we already finished the upstairs and they're living upstairs. That's why we're not using every exact method of cleanup down here because they've given us the whole downstairs. Although it is fairly clean, there's little bits of debris, dust and so forth because this is a project that we bid it to do it, have full access with no access from the client downstairs. They're not expecting it to be the same condition we would have if they were coming in and out of this every day. So you'll see the things a little different in this project than you might in one where people are passing through the work area and have access to it every day. This client is actually living upstairs the entire time. They will not be coming into this area. Even so, it's still a very neat job. It's, it's uh, very safe. We don't leave anything unsafe. None of these wires that we see hanging down are live. I can lick them, oh but I won't because Morgan would get mad. What are we doing over here? I didn't even know that this existed in the house. <laughs> right? And it's I the same. It was there. Well, you can see that we're, in this room we're going to be doing painting. We did we did add these pocket doors to give more access to a, to a, a closet, a, a or closet what? storage area. Uh -huh. And um, oh, that's, that's a new pocket, pocket door, door, new new header. So it's double pocket doors, beautiful pocket doors that slide in and hide. Uh -huh. And then we're doing, of course, the texture, tape and floating, painting. Is this their master? I think so. Right? Yes, is yes this, is the, this is the master suite. So that'll be a nice one closet here, one big closet here, his yeah. and hers. Nice big shower. Mm -hmm. Look at all the work it takes to move a drain to the proper place. It's very much like the other one. This is one of the deeper ones, though, that we've had to go in. Uh, the last one we saw on the other job, one of the last deep two. it was deep too, and sometimes you end up with that. So what we're doing is, is leaving all the re reinforcement bars in place. 
That way it does not affect the structural integrity of the foundation. If it does, we do an engineered repair, drilling in new bars at certain angles and certain depths, and then tying those together. But in this case, none of them were cut. We use a method of cutting in so far and then chipping the rest so the rebar does not get affected. In some cases, you have cables. Mm. And you do not want to touch those. If you do, that's of an expensive repair, which we've had to do before. This will be have fill, a compactable fill down in there, and then that's non-expansive mm -hmm. so that it doesn't expand and contract and weaken the area of the concrete. It's not a, it's not a lot of concrete that's getting poured in there. Four to six inches, as you can see here, and, and then the rest is fill. But this is a structural, engineered structural repair. This is where the drain used to be on that end, and now we've moved it over. I believe this was the old location here, and we've brought in new venting going up, PEX piping. Here's another little common thing we do. We put the valve right here where you walk in so you can control it without having to get wet under the shower head. You just turn it on right here. Maybe get undressed and then the water's already warm for you. But that's a nice convenience thing. We don't charge any extra for that. And here's some of the fill. This is a good example of what acceptable fill looks like. What you've got is crushed limestone. This is the same product that was used. It's called base, commonly called base. And it can go from an inch and a half to dust. This is what you call three quarters to dust. You can use concrete chips in there as well, and that's acceptable because it does not expand or contract, and that's what you want. So since we took it out of that hole and it was actually done properly, we can actually use that to go back in. But many times we find that it's dirt, the soils were, were getting into the soils below it, and we cannot use that for fill. So it just depends on what you find? Yeah, this had a lot of fill in this, in this house, so it, it can still be used again. Some houses, though, did not have that much fill. This is probably on a slope, and they had to build it up. Mm -hmm. And that's why they had to bring in fill. But if, you, if you're if you on a very level land, usually you're going to find that it's sitting right on the ground that's been compacted for thousands of years. That's acceptable. But you can't bring in loose fill or loose soil for fill for any foundation, as we've said in other videos. So, I'm happy with that visit. I see what I want to see. And... It's nice to know when I go to a project that I'm going to see the kind of quality consistently on every job.